leg of a major secular bull market, the, the pause phase was extremely painful and a lot longer duration than I ever expected it to be. But nonetheless, we have started the third leg up. The run to gold has begun, as I've said on your, you know, podcast and many others that, you know, starts off <clears throat> rather stealthily where, you know, just the central banks are buying more gold than they have in, in times past, which is taking place. <clears throat> and then more and more institutional types will come in and then, you know, pension funds and hedge funds and then individuals and wealth managers will be pushing them clients in the gold and, you know, on and on it goes until we get a lot of momentum. We're not there yet, but the, the process has begun. So where do we end the end of the year in gold? Again, I don't know for sure, but it wouldn't surprise me to see something in the 26, 2650, maybe 2700. Will it get to 3000 by end of the year? It could. I think for that to happen, we've got to see something big like some problem with the U.S. election or election maybe in another country, some, unfortunately, maybe escalation in the war, some um, uh, asymmetric something that happens in the war, and I'm talking the Middle East and Ukraine and, you know, Taiwan, who knows? So, you know, but to get $500 more in this year on gold is a bit of a stretch in my view, but certainly can happen. But the point is that uh, we don't really have to fear trading from the long side for both the metals, which doesn't mean you can be blasé about it. If you buy and hold, you can be pretty calm about it. But if you're trading, you want to pick your entry points very carefully and keep stops tight and realize that even in a big bull market, even in the last phase, which is the most usually the most rewarding, that there will be some significant pullbacks and some times where you doubt that the market's going higher, that maybe it's peaked, and uh, climbing that wall of worry. So that's where we are. Right in the COT right now where that's pretty ugly, meaning that uh, the professionals the men, uh, are, are ready to get taken by the banks. I think uh, you know the problem with the COT is it's very accurate as far as the trend shift is going to take place. It's inaccurate as far as duration. As soon as you get into this zone, is it going to be a week, a month, two months, sometimes three months before it actually flips that direction? But we're in a caution area right now. If you're trading right now, I would take profits, you know, over the next, you know, short duration, <clears throat> maybe be early. But no, it doesn't look good structurally for, for gold right now. Again, well, David, last week you said it looked good in golds, you know, 100 bucks higher. You know, are you out of your mind? No, I'm not. Uh, but these are zones. So we're in what would be called the selling zone on a trading basis. Again, how long will it take? We don't know. Just a question. First of all, before the election, I'll say it's over 30. After the election, depending who gets in, I'd say if the Democrat gets in, it'll be 2 to $3 higher. If uh, Republicans get in, it may steady, be more... Uh, a lower move, like stay around the 30 level, kind of hug that level. There is a bit of a correspondence between who's elected. Um, once uh, the, the illness happened, we saw that big sell-off in silver. We got about 120, 125 to one, the gold silver ratio. I was lucky enough to buy within a couple of days at the bottom. <clears throat> and then it shot back up. Uh, and then after, uh, the Trump left and uh, Democrats got in. And uh, a lot of people, well, after Trump got in, basically, a lot of people just sort of gave up buying their precious metals. It's like, well, you know, someone's in the White House that's going to fix everything for us. And that's my strong belief that's incorrect. You really have to, uh, you know, feed your family first. You can't depend on any uh, political figure to solve, you know, problems. Uh, <clears throat> that are personal. I mean, your personal finances are your personal finances. So now the correlation is being Democrats usually pushes it higher, faster. But it seems like long-term what you're saying, there's not much impact. In the long run, it doesn't make any difference. In the short term, it can't. That one is that uh, the cost of mining platinum is greater than the spot price in a lot of cases. 
Uh, item number two is it's 15 times rarer than gold. Item number three is 70% uh, comes from South Africa, and they've really got problems down there, not only politically, but also with uh, electricity, with power. And, of course, mining is very dependent on power. And then the last one I put in the last video had to do with uh, the hydrogen economy. Who knows if that ever come about or not? Certainly there's work being done in that sector, and it demands platinum uh, if it's coming to fruition. And even if it doesn't come to fruition, uh, there'll be a lot of experimentation around uh, that hydrogen economy and using platinum. So it's a lot of bullish factors lining up. It's certainly been a laggard. And, you know, I've heard uh, one of the stalwarts in our industry, CEO of a very major uh, royalty or streaming company. And I've heard this a lot from a lot of the stalwarts that, you know, gold always leads and silver always lags and it, you know, catches up. It goes back and forth. But I, when I was trading futures for a living, I mean, my broker, my third one was extremely good. And he always, first thing he said to me, really, once we made a connection, was the whites lead the yellow. And in those days, it did. Uh, platinum, palladium, and silver actually usually advanced before gold did. And if you look back to the last big move in the metals from 2009, the crisis, up to 2011, the last peak, silver peaked uh, April 30th, May 1st, and gold didn't peak until uh, September of that year. So, I mean, that's a pretty good example of silver leading gold. It peaked before gold. And anyway, I'm not trying to make a, a case out of it. I'm just saying that uh, my stance has changed. No, whites don't always lead the yellow, and the yellow doesn't always lead the whites. Uh, that's what's happening right now, and I, I you know, I can confirm that. But uh, as things go further, uh, we'll just see. You know, there'll be a back and forth. Regardless, I think it's probably the most undervalued metal. Of course, I'm biased. I've been uh, accumulating the platinum sector now for several months, and it really hasn't done anything. I did add to my silver position even at these lofty prices because I just didn't see anything out there that looked as good. We got that pretty big smash down around 27. I got in around that point. I'm up two bucks, which if your leverage is, it can be significant. Shortly after, it's inevitable in my view. I mean, there's never been a fiat currency that hasn't collapsed and that doesn't mean absolute zero and it doesn't even mean non-acceptance. I mean, you know, the, uh, you know, in Venezuela, you can t get pictures on the internet of, you know, currency in the gutters because no one's bothering to pick it up. It's so worthless. Uh, that happened in Zimbabwe. Uh, I don't think the dollar will ever get to that level, but I do think that the currency crisis will demand an implementation of a uh, reset. And no one, uh, to my knowledge, knows exactly how that looks. Do you readjust the interest rates on the bonds or the 